I've done it again. I've made another robot. Well, it's not happy, but still. This is currently unnamed Sari Hobbyweight. For some reason, something in the UK thought it would be a good idea that the UK should have some Hobbyweights. Ta da! This is a relatively quick build, um, one of the sort of spur of the moment kind of things, using all parts I currently had. And to be fair, it's quite really well. Uh, even to the point where we were able to have some testing with it the other day. So, this sort of series of videos is my thought process of building it, a few techniques, um, how it came to be, and then lots of testing. I actually got a fight with it as well the, the other day, which was quite pleased. Um, no spoilers. And then probably finally I'll go over improvements I want to make ready for its next outing. So, expect rambling, bad editing, shaky camera work. Usual, you know, usual for me really. Enjoy. Right, the hobby weights seem to be taking off in the UK. Uh, a few builders have already started building those, some have even finished. And, you know, I feel left out. I want to go. So, scouring what I've bits I've got left, I don't want to spend too much money on it. But, one thing I do have is a drive motor left over from the old Grimlock. So, the other side, the gearbox basically blew itself up. So, I've still got one left. Thinking, simple lifter, uh, it's a 300 revolutions a minute. So, I don't know, will it have enough to lift 12 pounds? 5-ish kilograms? I don't know. <laughs> That's why we do these test things. So, let's take that the floor. I have a... a hand robot that weighs about the same size anyway. About the same weight. Right. There's no power in it anyway. Hmm, okay. Sort of seems to struggle a little bit, and then once it goes a bit further on the stick, it's um. Okay. It might work. Do a bit more power, still. Talk anyway. Okay. Slight rethink on the lift mechanism. Lift gears. Um. Just going through all my various boxes and bits, and I found Raving Lunatic's box, um, which has been sat in the box for a long time, shall we say. Um, you know, am I really going to finish the Raving Lunatic? Am I really going to rebuild it again with all the issues? I don't know, probably not. One of the motors is drawing the drive motors is in the spinner of Toothless anyway, so sod it. So this is. The pinion uh, gear that would have, would have gone on the 5060s, and that's the production gear. So, do a bit of machining and get it all right. But hopefully, that will give us a bit more torque beyond the lifter. So, lock that in. Oh God, there are just some things you can't do one handed. Okay, 
see how this works. And my sacrificial robot. Does help. There we go. Right. Take two. Does help to move the stick in the right way. on the bloody shaft. Oh yeah, that's better. Much better. Let's try it right on the end. That did work. Briefly. Hmm. Two things twisted now already. Already. For a little bit. <laughs> so, I suppose what I'm going with here is a flipping two wheeled lunatic two, really, isn't it? Puts this in the middle. Five motors there, one there, one there, battery. Yeah, sort of whiplash type. Mm, okay. I suppose, yeah, like I said, they do what I've done with Lunatic 2 and have adaptable forks and wedges and on the front because I've no idea what this heavy weight. Everybody else's robots look like or what they've done yet. There's not been a fight in the UK, in the UK yet, so okay. So much once this is all supported on the other side, there'll be none of that twisting. I hope. Yeah, right. I'll probably do that. Tighten up all these bolts a bit so there's less wobble. So it's <laughs> all so, borderline of flipper status, isn't it? Deadlift this. Oh, right. Could build it like a grabby, lifty, grabby thingy, sort of bar guest and type. Hmm. 
Yeah, that works. Oh, I'm gonna do that then. Uh, yeah, but I guess it's a featherweight. Isn't it here in the UK? It's all like a yeah, Google it. Uh, it's also a beat weight called a uh, grab cap, grab crab. It's by uh, Bristol Bot Builder. Joe Joe Brown does all the he directed bug bots and it's like a you sort of pick up, but you've got sort of added bits here. Sort of so when you lift up, you sort of hold it and you sort of suplex. It. Like slam, I suppose, battle box, but it has got the powered grabby bits, it's all just one piece. Oh, I'm actually quite pleased there was enough talk to do actually, so yeah, I'll probably do that actually rather than just a big simple lifter so I can suplex some, some hobby weights. I have a few about an hour or so racking my head around how I'm gonna. How this thing is going to look, and took a bit of inspiration from Grab Crab and Bar Guest, but yeah, pretty much have a thought. Uh, two wheels because of other weights seem to be, yeah, obviously less weight than a featherweight, so it's stick with two wheels. So that'll be a little bit higher up in the middle of the robot drive. Uh, this will be a little bit shortened down though, and there'll be the two forks coming off it with the two sort of support bits. Mm. And then sort of like placeable, customizable armour, but probably just going to be quite thick steel around there. So, see if I have HCPE. Oh, if not, I've got a big bucket there full of offcuts as well. So, Let's get measuring a building. After my coffee. Drive motors in. Uh, using 15mm HTP for sides, 10 for the back. Because uh, they're using these wheels, because of they're sort of indent a fair bit. Um, if, you're, if I run 20, the wheels rub on the bulkheads, so. Uh, same issue I had with doing tech two because these are the same type of wheels. So we'll need some back supports there. So probably do those later. Um, so now it's figuring out how to attach that bit in there. Dish. Uh, bottom plate and top plates, I'll probably use that clear polycarbonate I've used again on Lunatic 2 because that's what I've got a decent amount. If I start using steel, 2 mil mile steel, might get to that weight limit quite quickly. Although the two luster bots, those two there, they've got a fair bit of steel on them. And still within weight, but I don't want to sort of risk it because these are. This setup's quite heavy. So, right, power on. The whole weapon assembly, assembly is now in and mostly straight ish. I think that's could have done with being slightly more forward, but sure will be alright. There's a weight check, just under three kilograms. So, uh, yeah, just under three kilograms. I think that's all the heavy stuff too. So, what else we got? Uh, batteries, spin controllers. Obviously, that will be changed as well. But yeah, uh, just put some front panels on. Uh, probably ten mil. Help keep its shape. Yeah, get in there. Unfortunately, that is about it for day one because it is time to go pick up the kids from school. However, um, front two bits are on, wheels are on properly, motors mounted, 
Uh, trim that bolt because it was sticking in here. So just tucked up the weapon motor again and we'll give it a bit of a test on the floor. Uh, right. This is actually looking quite good how it is actually, but Seems to look quite well. I'm going to go and grab that half a cluster pot. Oh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> and it's about three. Stupid idea, Christopher. Why'd you do that? Okay. Cool. So, um, what have we got left to do? Obviously, top, bottom panels. And then, I think it's weapon next. So, what I'm going to do with this. Um, so, design it. I'm going to play on bit and paper and stuff, but I think we're looking alright. I quite like how it's actually like a ramming spike. Um, oh, what's the one at the live shows? Odd, odd, odd bot. <laughs> There's that might be a select few people who actually might recognize that one, but yeah, basically two wheel drive and massive ramming spike on the thing. You used to see it at the live shows. Oh, right, okay, day one done. So, let me just start a name. Hmm, I'll think about name as well. Okay, right. Do some more whenever.